everybody. Welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Today we have a very special guest on the show. Uh, Katie Pritchard is an Instagram influencer. I don't tell you too much about her, but she had a crazy story. A lot of you sent me this screenshot of her story or IG story, and it piqued my interest, so I read it, and I said, yep, this is what's happening. And so Katie has kind of been on a mission lately to do a couple of things, and we're going to let her talk about that. But Everybody, I want you to welcome Katie. I know we're not live or anything, but we're in the premiere. I'm sure Katie will be here as well chatting. So just welcome Katie and uh, let's get to it. Katie, welcome. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Like give me the, give me like the cliff notes, you know, one minute version of who you are. So everybody can just kind of be acquainted. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm a mom of four. So I have a 13 year old. I also have three under four. So a big gap there. Um, (laughs) That's quite a gap. A little bit of a gap. I (laughs) met my husband when my daughter was five. So then, you know, we got married and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, took some time and yeah, had a lot of, a lot more kids, but um, it's great. We work from home. We mm-hmm. do homeschooling with our four-year-old, and we'll probably do homeschool with our others. And then our oldest is in public school. Uh, my husband owns and operates some microbreweries. I haven't told you that yet, but um, here in Oklahoma, mm-hmm. um, it's a pretty interesting thing. Uh, he comes from like a line of restaurant. Uh, oh, cool! Yeah, so um, serving all the finest hipsters, uh, craft there, beer, man. the whole world, the whole other world. <laughs> But that's wonderful, and um, we do uh, everything from home. We care for our kids twenty four seven. Both of us. I mean, he he balances his job and uh, everything with the kids. I mean, totally hands on. So uh, definitely a team effort uh, here. And uh, the Instagram thing fell in my lap a few years ago when my four-year-old was just born. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that whole world existed until she was a baby. And, you know, I'd be online uh, shopping or whatever. And I just had no idea that influencing and really like blogging to that degree was a thing. And I thought, oh, I could do this maybe. And so then a, a year later, I was like trying to do that kind of work and uh it, it it happened for a little while and here i am kind of in this weird space uh four right. years so, later so it sounds like it's something that you kind of stumbled upon it wasn't something you were after right because i took a lot of photos and just enjoyed that side of it and i may buy an outfit or whatever tag a brand and then that brand be like you know kind of notice it mm-hmm. and that's just kind of how it started starts up for a, a lot of people is they'll be like, well, I'll send you something free if, if you'll take a few more photos. And okay. I, I, I was so flattered by that, you know, a long time ago that I, that's kind of how it happened. It was more of like a, a give or take a trade type thing for mm-hmm. a while. And it, and it still is. I mean, even at the degree of where I'm at now, I mean, I still do some trade work or I have been. So, um, that sounds great. And you know, it, and I'm, again, I'm generally not against influencing whatsoever. I'm against, unethical influencers and people who generally are completely fake um, about everything they are. But at the same time, I could even understand that, right? You know, if people are getting something out of it, I get it. What you And I think you know this, what, I, what, what happens with me is when kids get involved and they don't have the opportunity to say no, or they're coerced into this world, and I honestly believe that this world is no good for any kid whatsoever. I don't care how much money they think they make, how much happiness they think they have, or how much fun they think they're having. I just don't honestly believe that a full-time vlogger, and I'll stay in that sphere for now, um, can actually be a real parent when when everything they're searching for when everything they do is after content what you know if a kid gets hurt that's content if a kid's going through puberty that's content all this to say I don't think that you that's what you do and I, I did I did a little bit of research obviously you're mainly an Instagram influencer which is great um you you've got great taste uh you're you're an artist you could tell that you're a creative You've got an aesthetic that's beige, and I make fun of a lot of people who do that, but that it is what it is. It's it's a successful model, so whatever. I make fun of it, but um, I had a, a meme on my page the other day, and it was like this mom who made one of those 
I don't know what you call it, bare icing. It looked like there's like just a touch of icing on it because that's like the, the aesthetic. I don't it's know. It's called a naked cape. Get it oh, right. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate it. So now I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to learn some, some things and I love it. But okay. So you're in this world. Everything's kind of going well. You're making a bit of money probably. You know, you're, you're happy with it. Your kids seem to be happy with it for, you know, to a degree or whatever. We'll talk about that in a minute. But then lead up to why we got connected. What the hell just happened to you? Well, and I also want to back up to the very beginning of 2021. That's when I was in the middle of the pregnancy of my fourth baby, uh, mm -hmm. my baby now, who's eight months. Um, that was a transition that happened way before what just happened, which was uh, me realizing I wanted to take a step back from... During, during the pregnancy? Sure. Yeah. Like uh, one year ago. Can I ask you a question though real yeah. quick? As someone who's been in this world, how many babies have you had as an influencer online? So this is my, technically it's my second because okay. I told you that when my four, four year old was a baby, that's right, when I right. kind of opened my eyes to it. Okay. So I have a question for you. I mean, be brutal honest with me. Okay? Please. Cause I know where this is going. <laughs> Tell me how much of a boost you get when you show your pregnancy online. Oh, unreal. It's, like, is it like everyone wants to look at a pregnant person. Well, I, I kind of agree with that. I, I don't tell a lot of people this. <laughs> so I tell everybody, I think <laughs> pregnant women are absolutely beautiful. I just, yeah. when my wife was pregnant, I'm like, Hey, yeah. nurse, <laughs> I love it. I just don't know if it's pheromones. I just think that's something about, I don't, I, people are it's like, it's your kink. I, I don't think it's a kink. I just think it's a beautiful thing. And women who are pregnant are just like generally glowing. They, anyway, it's it, people make fun of me for it. Exactly it not what, what I thought is. you were going to ask. No, no. I honestly believe that, um, that that's beautiful. And I, I understand why, but I wanted to know the back end analytics of it just a little, you don't have to give me everything. Yeah. But honestly, is it the biggest engagement you get? No bar none, right? Yeah, even after the baby's born. I mean, baby right. content definitely yep. is, is a is a big one, but it goes way down after the baby's born. <laughs> right, and I think thanks for being honest with me about mm -hmm. that because if we if we are honest with ourselves and influencers are honest, that's why I mean that's a big payday for them, and we know it. They just don't want to say it, but that's right. And I and I honestly do believe this. Not for all. Maybe for a small majority or a small minority of the people who do this, but having babies is big business, and they do it for the business. Well, that was the question I thought you were going to ask. Yeah, well, I'm not saying I didn't. I don't think you did, but I'm saying, do you? I honestly believe that. I did that. actually. <laughs> I'm no, just kidding. Don't tell your kid that. I'm uh, only kidding. Oh my god, cut that. Ugh. It's okay. No, no, it's funny. But I, you um, know what I'm saying? Do you yeah. honestly like if, if this is if this if it, if an influencer is making let's say a million dollars a year and AdSense and ad reads and everything else, but when you have a baby and it doubles that, I mean, <laughs> I, will, I mean I maybe it's a this. bonus that you love kids and that you're going to have more, but it actually gives you tons more money. And, and here's another thing, and, and I really did think you were going to ask me that, uh, like did it influence you to want a baby? Um, and, and here's the thing. I wonder how many, I, truly, I wonder how many influencers would have babies. I'm not saying they all do it just for Instagram, but like mm -hmm. if Instagram or any social media did not exist, if we couldn't do the announcements, if we couldn't do, if we couldn't broadcast it, how many would, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm sure I'm, it has a lot of pull. If I, I were. Again, I think it, when it comes to large influencers too, uh, right now, Everly, our, uh, Sav, Le, uh, Savannah LeBrant, uh, they're pregnant with their best friends, the Fish Fam, and that's big bucks. They have 12 million subscribers. So for them, that's that's just big, 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 big dollars. And yeah. again, they're having, they're having babies at the same time. Their friends are having babies because it's the thing. And if you look at their kids, spe specifically Everly LeBrand, I know you probably don't know them, but I when she know. was told about the pregnancy, go watch one of my videos on that one. When she was told about the pregnancy, she's like, I don't care. She hates it. She realizes that her life is all about, I, I, I think something's going on over there, but again, I, I'm glad that people are waking up to it. But at the same time, I actually, I absolutely understand why babies are a big thing because I actually think that that's, there's a positive to that because think about this for a second, a baby, I know people are going to come at me for saying just this thing. Not really. I don't think that's such a big deal throwing a picture of a baby up as long as they're not naked. Okay. As long as they're not in compromising positions for Pluto's to have at their content. Um, if it's a baby, you know, gurgling in their little pen or have macaroni and cheese on their face, different, I think, because in the end, they're not even going to look like that in a few years. But if that's the sole purpose and you're making money off that baby, I can't see it. But all that to say is that when babies, 
I think I think baby content is great because I actually think that we are in a position right now, Canada and U.S. specifically, anyway, where we're not growing enough to populate our current. For it used to be at two point five babies was enough to sustain our populations, right? I don't know if you know that, but we're at one point two no. right now. We're at one point two, which means that we're not going to be able to sustain our population going forward at this rate. We're going to be dropping your whole everything's going to have to come in from other countries which is not a big deal but it's it's interesting that i say that because i think honestly people should be being fruitful and multiplying if you want to have babies i think you should have as many babies as you can if you can handle it if you don't that's great too but i want to just say babies are great and that's why they bring so much money the baby industry alone just in marketing is probably in the upper tens of billions Right. That's and, why and, I'm, people do and it. I'm one of those weird people that when we talked about like displaying our pregnancy and photographing it and sharing it, um, away from like the analytics side, I just am a weird, like I love being pregnant. I, I'm, you know, <laughs> some women will absolutely tell you they hate it. Yeah, some yeah. women are like, they think they're being annoying by just saying like, I love being pregnant. I love being pregnant. I really, my wife really, was the same. It's, it's, um, it's so empowering in so many ways i feel very beautiful too like when you're I'm a pregnant, damn superhero you're growing a damn I just, person yeah, I it's love, amazing i love more than anything uh pregnant photography or maternity yep. maternity uh, photography yeah so um i'm gonna quit my email there because it was dinging um but but in 2021 i the beginning of that, you know, I was in the middle of my pregnancy and I just was realizing that I don't have the time, energy, space to to continue on uh, with obligations and brands and deadlines and all of that. So that's why I really stopped. Uh, that's why I really, and I say stopped, I mean, I still, if I really wanted something bad enough and someone was like, hey, like, I think I did a, a rug, like a few rugs and just shit like that that I, I needed in my rug. house. <laughs> shit like I needed or like I wanted because like I'm in the position to to do it like that's why I was very careful like I never say never but and, and I still did all my little trades with uh the brands mm -hmm. that I've worked with for years and years like if they wanted to send a box of clothes like okay we'll take it like you yeah. know I'll, I'll share it, but you were cutting back you weren't you weren't major, pursuing it hardcore okay major cutback and that's been the case and so moving forward um that's where I've been this whole year of 2021 and then on christmas day that's when all the that's when all the shit went down okay. and do you want christmas me to kind of, day yeah actually it's right. christmas eve because i remember that because i remember it happening on christmas eve and me not wanting to waste i, I wanted to dive in hard right then and there but i was like okay i, I want to do christmas with my family and like not be on my phone all day because when i say consuming like taking down anyway no we'll let's get, get there let's get there Tell me, okay, Christmas Eve rolls around. What do you discover? So my 13-year-old comes in my bedroom. I was laying down or something, and she comes in with her phone, and she's like, Mom, and she's like, she's cutting up and giggling about it. And I was like, what? She's like, look what I found, you know, 13-year-olds. Sounds like that. <laughs> like she was, she was like, Mom, look. She was like, These, this account is pretending to be like you and us. Like it had – it didn't wow. only have my picture as the profile image, but it had – uh, photos and interestingly they were photos from 2019 so they were when my uh, second youngest was a baby and, and mm -hmm. so they, they scrolled back uh, quite a bit to get those photos mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. all have like a certain aesthetic I was using like a certain preset at that point that I'm not even using now so it doesn't even really look a lot like my current imagery so um, except anyway. that it is your imagery except it, it is, is you <laughs> it's totally us and like yeah. I haven't changed much so yeah it is us. but I was like my heart sank immediately when she showed me this account and she's like still thinking like it's like some just joke like cute little joke and i'm and like probably you know if someone impersonates you or like i'm sure a lot of influencers actually take it as flattery but like more in like the lines of oh they're creepy. trying to be like us <laughs> well but like, like as if it's not creepy though to a teenager so i right. instantly was like oh no this this is weird and the more i I mean, I scrolled through that so fast. I saw the hashtags mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. RP role, and I was like, I never heard of that before in my What's life. What's RP? Role play. Um, oh my god! This. Okay, sorry. Keep it's going. A, it's, my a, bad. it's a whole other rabbit oh, hole. But, shit. Um, so role play, like uh, the the hashtags. I don't have it up right now, but like uh, the one said bisexual role play. One said uh, 
role play adoption. That's a big one. Cause like, do you what know the name do, of the account? Do you know the name of the account while you're doing that? I'm look well, it it's, it's way gone now. Oh, okay. Or either it's, either it's taken down, down, or it uh, was just renamed, which is also, how did she find it? Well, they were dumb enough to follow her. And like, she has her, she has her account set up. Of course, I monitor everything on her account. It's all private. She has to know everyone. She has to have a personal relationship with everyone that follows her. Okay. So, she noticed, obviously, that it was a. Uh, it wasn't my current profile picture, but it was one that I had used two years ago. So she was like, "I noticed this person it was really pretty and looked like you, and it was you." And I was like, "Oh yeah, no oh, shit, it is." Um, and so then it had six of our photos. So this was a newer account. I think the first photo had been posted like six days prior to us discovering it. Again, though, they uh, um, requested to follow her. They were following me because I don't have. I'm public, so I I don't look who's following me um uh, that's another story but uh instead of locking down my account deleting my account the f fastest thing i could do uh or where my mind went was like everything needs to come down i'm deleting everything this had mm -hmm. been i had been going back and forth with the idea of taking my kids down anyway uh mm -hmm. months ago uh just uh how i was really doing a lot of reflecting on that but why um, what why though i'm gonna stop you there why uh well, two reasons. I, I mean, I've always thought of this privacy thing. I've always thought of, will they love this in 10 years, 20 years? Like, I've always thought that side of it. But also, I just, as a way to kind of step back and detach, uh, I, I guess, most of all, privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then no, just like, I, I'm addicted to this app. Uh, so I feel like making these changes, though, are stepping stones to just kind breaking of breaking like the addiction beat. right and you know what and good on you though because how many people are going to admit that when we all are right? but we all but are. i but i really think it's important too that my ch my children just get to live their life like off of the camera and 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 like i'm so love it i'm so guilty uh we, we go to florida twice a year a few times uh, we we go on these certain trips and i feel like so much of that is um i mean not and, and honestly not at the level that I know some people are doing, but still to me, like in my gut, it doesn't feel good that I'm worried about, like I'm getting all of our outfits ready because like I want to make sure everyone's like coordinated and, and like um, everything in the photo that day will look all great. Uh, I just, I, I wanna let go of even worrying about it. I wanna let go of even mm -hmm. thinking about it and putting them through posing, like all these pictures of these candid pictures of them not looking and, and we'll get to that, but like, all of that is done so candidly like it's not they don't even know i'm doing it so to mm -hmm. like i'm not worried about doing that of course i'm going to snap photos of my kids to keep forever and yes i'll probably have them pose for a picture every once in a while but um yeah it was it was i mean just that's kind of i mean i me. think that's can separate and i hope that some people can do that like do this candid stuff but for the most part these kids are posed they're sitting there they don't want to do it i've got a video someone sent me of some kid being coached and she just was done with it and they're coaching 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 and these kids aren't like they just want to go play they want to be kids they don't want to take pictures i mean just understand that for a second just take it down to its core that these parents who are doing this to post this stuff that's their business but their kids like we should be parents and be able to provide for our kids without ever having to use our kids ever. It should never ever come yeah. in to the equation ever. And that I will say when kids. you when you like with me, I making that decision, like almost immediately, like days after, like two days later, I was in the nail salon and I saw a mom like with her daughter, uh, making her and this daughter was like two or three, like they were having the, a mommy. Yep. and spa day and she was like making her pose and like repose and repose and repose mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm like wanting to scream at her but like i would detaching myself and making this decision allows me to see it through a different lens and yeah. like i probably would have been like oh that's cute like you know and i actually pointed it out to my daughter i was like look and and i, I mean it's not bad i'm not judging it's just like I don't want to do that. You see, you also see, you know how the sausage is made though, and you're seeing the back end. But okay, so let's clarify a little bit. I feel like some people are going to be confused. Sure. What was this account doing with your shit? I don't fully know. I don't know that I'll ever know. Um, I didn't reach out to them, and that's a question I've been getting too. Is like, did you did you ask them to take them down? Like, no, I didn't, and I didn't because I'm like, what's the point? Like, they're they're in, so invasive to come in and like steal my photos and post them and give us mm -hmm. all they gave us a 
they renamed us. They gave us new identities, new personalities. And when I say personalities, like my daughter who's four, this is when I started really putting shit together and uh, started getting really creeped out was that Mm -hmm. they talk about how I'm a girly girl. I love ice cream. And like when you bring, and then on the bio, it said ice cream shop. That was literally all it said in the bio. And I just instantly started thinking of like, different flavors and like you can pick out of these kids for like your different and i'm not sure and i don't know if it was doing that but how many followers did it have uh i don't remember not maybe like just low hundreds okay so here's my here's (laughs) what i think's happening here's what i think's going on they're taking semi large accounts where you have over a hundred thousand right how many do you have 90 something. Thousand, yeah, they're taking nice. somewhere between 50 and 110,000. So not huge accounts, not blue check marks accounts. What they're doing is they're harvesting your photos. They're creating alternate accounts. They're growing these accounts to a level of monetization or whatever you call it, like 10,000, 20,000, 30, 40, and they're selling them. And then you, they sell, you can buy accounts. You yeah. can buy monetized YouTube accounts, Instagram accounts that already have those followers. I think I heard uh, someone said yesterday, they said this woman I bought an account with 30,000 subs and she just gets free vacuums. So she changed the whole thing to just be about vacuums. They already had the 30,000 followers. So vacuum companies don't know that vacuum companies are like, okay, we, we see that you're an influencer in the space. Cause you have 30,000 subs. They're that's not looking at engagement. So that's what I think. But at the same time, these people are clearly looking at their engagement rate because those those fans that were built on that, unless they continue being you while selling vacuums, then I don't, I don't know, know how they, that goes. It was, it was definitely like a storyline of uh, being me as the narrator. Uh, I had so I literally can't even pronounce the name they gave me. And it also makes me think it wasn't in the U.S. It makes me think it was yeah. uh, and because they used mum, M-U-M. M-U-M. And I'm like, oh. it's exactly what they're doing. What they're doing is they're selling these accounts or running these accounts, right? And they're doing what you would be doing. So they're they're pretending to be you, growing that channel to be you, and then reaching out to other companies to get free or paid advertisement. And they're still you. That's what I think is happening. I don't think it's a predator thing. I think it's well, it's predatory, but I don't think it's like a pedo thing, right? Pluto. Well, but, I call them Pluto. But here's this side of it too. A lot of it, a lot of the hashtags are role play, but you also mm-hmm. see a lot of the role play adoption. And here's where I feel like it is more of a personal thing. And like, I'm not saying they're not selling anything, but this mm-hmm. is where I find uh, the some harm in, in like the children is that um, I could see something like they are making this storyline. They are selling this story for people who Believe it or not, role playing is a thing. I had a few people reach out to me like, "Hey, I role played, and it's actually innocent." Um, role playing is it's it's. I know if you don't do it, it sounds very foreign. But I was like, "Whoa, tell me more!" And they're like, mm-hmm. "This is not okay. What you're what you're seeing, what you're discovering." But I've you know in college, whatever, whatever, I did role playing, and it's innocent. It's like a it's a it's a pastime. It's a hobby. People what type do of it. role? There's many kinds of role playing though. There's people who play role plays like they're fighting in wars or what this kind of role be, play? This would be family and mud, like baby. Like, okay, I'm uh, sorry. I don't care that they think it's innocent. That's creepy. No, I know. I totally get it. But that's creepy. Oh, you mean like just playing it in general? <laughs> well, I think role, RPG role playing games like you see the nerds who play all the the, the swords in the forest and all that shit. That I think I there's love, those yeah. kind too. But yeah, but if there's role plays of people who want to role play families, I'm sorry. That's no, because what creepy. will happen? What will happen is like they'll say spot available. They'll have the mom, the dad, and they'll have this spot is filled. This baby's filled. Whatever, and then they'll have like. Uh, needing a toddler or needing a mom, that spot's open. Again, I don't understand all of it. I'm just like, these are little puzzle pieces that I have discovered and that don't fully make sense, but that I painted this picture of, I think it's role playing into this family. And then I think it just gets sexual. I think that Mm -hmm. it gets obsessive. Uh, All the parasocial relationships um, that form beyond that. And because here's another thing is like, there are people who probably role play, but then there are also people who get obsessed in getting caught up in being that character. That's where I feel like my children aren't safe. That's where I feel like they could find where we live and take my kid. And maybe that's extreme to go there and to think, Mm -hmm. but that's where my mind goes. And that's why I did not waste a second. Well, I did waste a whole day because I wanted to spend Christmas like off my phone. 26 hit. I was glued to my phone for three days, deleting content. These people role playing. I think we kind of, I mean, we don't know the end game, but there's a couple end games. Role playing, which is creepy. 
predatory, which is also creepy, Pluto's, and just basically just taking advantage of you guys. And now it's going to be interesting to see, and that's why I want to talk to you about this today, because I don't think people realize how common this might be. And you just happened to discover it because of the they added your daughter. To me, it's crazy that they did that, first of all. Stupid. And if, if anybody's on Instagram... Uh, it, it might be behoove you to go see if you exist elsewhere outside of your own platform, right? And good luck finding it, though. Yeah, exactly. Like, how are you going to find it? People have asked me, that's the burning question, is like, how do I know if this is happening? How can I, you know, how can I search if our account's being, I'm like, you cannot. You can't. There's, there are going to be, there are tools I can think of right off the top of my head, like Google, Google reverse Re image. Yeah. Yes. There are some things, I mean, at the same time, you're probably not going to know it, but if you do find it, I mean, this is a problem. I mean, I didn't even know this existed until I, till I stumbled upon people sent me your stuff. So, but give me the feeling, like, what are you feeling when you open that? Like, an inst I know you might think predators, blah, 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 but other things like, what, what, why did it make you delete everything? Let's say it was just a person doing role playing and it wasn't, we don't know this, but it wasn't untoward. It wasn't predatory. Just somebody trying to monetize another channel. What made you delete all the pictures of your kids at that point? Yeah, I think at that point I had just already been having all these conversations with myself for months and months. And it was just like the, the, the cherry on top for like, you know, validating my feelings. And like, I don't feel, I, I didn't take it as flattery at all. It just made me feel so weird. It just like eyes were on us in a way that I didn't feel comforting. Mm -hmm. Um, cause one post was just an, in, like, like I went through something with my son who is now two and a half, but, um, he random, but he had this like weird reflux thing that I would share about uh, like he had a tongue tie we had to go get it revised at the dentist and blah 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 it was this thing when he was three months old mm -hmm. I shared this story like any motherhood account would mm -hmm. um, of what was going on uh, he spit up crazy like every day and so like I know that's like a super common thing very relatable to a lot of moms so I, I shared that whole process but this account had also taken that story mm -hmm. and they're like I'm going to the dentist today to get a second opinion da -da 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 -da. it was like this pretty lengthy caption and I just remember it being kind of my words but but when you see I don't know what it was but when I saw it in another lens through someone else's fake account it, it just made me question everything Thank God that you found that because this is really important here. And I want to touch on that for a second. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to throw shade at you or anything like that. Because I mean, honestly, maybe I'll just ask you the question. At that point, when you're sharing medical information about your children, okay, which is for me is a big effing no-no. I, I will just preface it with that. But when you're doing that, what is it, what is the purpose of sharing your kids? Because you th because mommy and are saying, here's the struggles we're going through. I want you to come along this journey so that you can maybe see it. Like I know I say raise, I make fun of people raising awareness because we're aware of all this shit. But um, right. what is it when you're sharing medical, specifically medical things like that, that makes you want to post that shit, to be honest with you? I don't yeah. know what... Yeah, um, I think for me personally, I can only answer from my own perspective. I, I don't think posting everything medical is necessary. I don't, mm -hmm. I think that like leaving it off offline would be best with that though. Um, it was actually something and, and I hate to say it. Uh, you, you said like, we are all aware there really are so many parents who claim that their baby is colicky or just refluxy and like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just like these babies who just projectile vomit all day long. And with my son's case, his was actually rooted in, in an issue that was totally revisable at, at a pediatric right. dentist. And so, and when I tell you night and day, like we got this uh, little surgery that took one minute and then we left the dentist office and that whole night he slept through the night after crying his head off for three whole months. So to me, mm, um, wow. I just had a lot of passion for just like sharing that. Um, I've, I've helped a lot of local friends. I've helped a lot of people who were on there. Um, so that part of it feels good. But I'll yeah. give you that. I'll give you that. I, I want I want to concede on some of that because I, I think I, I have often held and still probably do on zero tolerance for any medical things for our children because, but maybe, maybe I need to, to revise it to a degree where it's like, okay, talk about it don't show it. Sure. And I, there are so many times I'll see something in my story. Like I'll be like browsing through some stories and I'm like, mm, we just don't need to know that. Like we just, <laughs> who cares? So I definitely think that there are levels with that though. It was truly that it was so rare and that it was mm -hmm. like this new, I, 
thing. And I, and I didn't, sh- I didn't show a lot of like, there really wasn't much a show besides the little thing inside of his mouth. That, like yeah. no one cares to see. I, I got to tell you this though. One yeah. of the biggest things for Pluto's on the, on social media is kids going, if you go to these channels and I'm sorry to scare the shit out of you right now. No, if you go to like, let's say Weiss life. Okay. Or, um, our life. Okay. And look at their top videos and they're talking millions of hits. It's the kids at the dentist with their mouth open on the video because Pluto's, I think it's the mouth. It's a, it's the, the mouth. They do it with the leg shaving. They do it with feet. All these people with weird ass kinks. Like I'm a vanilla fetishes. dude. It's fetishes and kinks. Okay, I'm a vanilla dude. I don't have many. I think that these kink things really, really push the internet. And when you feed it to them and here's the thing, these parents, whoa, we just got a 150,000% boost on this video. When we normally get 40,000 hits, we just got 2 million hits. Let's do that again. Mm. Let's do that again. When I don't, I hope they don't realize, but I think they do, is that the people who are watching that are creepers. Yeah. So let's just make a promise, families, mm-hmm. to not put our kids' mouths on the internet. That's just the one. If you're going to talk about it, and I'm not, I'm not coming at you. You no, didn't know please. this, obviously. And, and also, um, but just, let's just make care. that. Yeah, no, I, 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 I appreciate that about you. That I really, honest. really don't care. I, I make, I think that there's a different level of <laughs> humility that we, we actually probably do need to always make fun of ourselves and call ourselves yeah. out, like you know. I just, and I don't think that's the thing that's like we're making light or fun. I just think that sure. a lot of parents aren't aware. Going to the dentist with your kids is Pluto bait times a thousand. They love that and shit, I didn't and they even will timestamp exactly, and they'll timestamp that. They'll timestamp kids in diapers. They'll timestamp kids on, in the pool with their bathing suits. Everything. But it they just have goes back playlists. to it. Just goes back to like you know when I went to the dentist when I was four or five or six or twelve. My mom wasn't posting it on the mm-hmm. internet. Like I didn't have to worry about. Yep thousands of followers online who perfect strangers online that we don't know seeing me at the dentist even if it isn't like harmful like i just want to go to the fucking like the dentist sucks in general like i don't want to be on blast online this is the difference between imagine what's been happening so this is why this is so relatively crazy and new right so we think about this for a second youtube is 15 years old when we were young do you mind if i ask how old you are you look like you're about 28 Oh, right now, how old am I? Yeah. 33. Thank you. Oh, okay. So, you, you know, I grew up sort of the same. I'm both, I'm both, I'm, I could be your uncle, but I'm 42. So we kind of <laughs> grew up similar, right? Mm-hmm. I get, what, what has changed in the past 15 years since YouTube and Instagram and all these places to become a massive thing? Even Instagram's not that old, right? But imagine this for a second. We grew up in a normal childhood where our parents aren't literally taking pictures of our food, our cakes, our bodies, our telling them, our, you know, you might go to your friends, you might go home. Christmas holidays with your family and your mom's like, Hey, Josh got his first pubes. Thanks mom. (laughs) It's different than doing that on the internet in front of a million people or 10 million people or whatever the case may be. Right. You don't know how many eyes are going to be on that. Not only that, but the, the one that started this whole channel, Micah, that I started talking about, her shit, even though she deleted her channel, exists on, on so many other platforms because it got copied and shared on Billy Billy, which is a Chinese website, like a YouTube, because mm-hmm. she, they adopted from China. So it was big for them, right? Everything you put on the internet, and you are proof of this, okay? You don't have control. As soon as you hit that effing send button or that post button or whatever it is you're doing, you lose all control of that content you sent out there. Because... Because... Instagram's not going to do shit about it. Those people who are doing it likely are in a place that you can't do anything about it anyway. And so everybody needs to be aware of this. And this is a big issue. There's a girl on my Instagram named Claire. She does, she's a photographer and she does, she, she talks about child safety online with photography specifically. And she's got a, I'm going to probably get her on the show too. She's really great with this. But as, as soon as this thing exists digitally, it's forever. And don't even forget about how, in, how, how easy it is for people to utilize deep fake technology and turn those photos and those videos of you into pornographic stuff and it happens. I am very scared to do this, but eventually I'm going to hire a professional to take me onto the dark web to show me that I don't want to see any child PN. I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm t- there, there are parents selling their kids underwear on the dark web. And I'm not going to tell you who, cause that's coming out soon. Hopefully they're going to be in jail. Their parents selling photos of their kids online there's a side hustle for this whole thing. There are all these things going on and the dark web is full of people who are willing to take this technology that's so easy to exist. Like I could take your photo right now and I could put you on, you know, you could be elf, buddy the elf in the movie, the elf right now. I could make the whole movie with you and it'd take like that. And you are now, I mean, some of them are more powerful than others, but they're getting so powerful that you cannot tell the difference. And so what people are doing is they're taking famous people or children or whatever the case may be. And they're superimposing their images onto these, porno things as far as I think and they're making films and they're selling them 
And that is the scariest so thing in the sick. world because the parasocial relationship that comes from that, these guys are obviously super creepy anyway already. So what's, again, and I, I told you this yesterday when we talked and I say this all the time. We are currently in a state of waiting for one of these predators to kill, kidnap, or otherwise one of these influencers, vloggers, kids. That's what we're waiting for yeah. until any change is made. And yeah. we shouldn't be. We know right now that this exists. We can stop it through laws, through rules, through terms of service, and they won't touch it. And I reached and out to one, it. I mean, in my eyes opened a little bit more to that even when I found uh, someone was like, oh, this that looks like, because I had shared some screenshots. Um, mm -hmm. I even like blurred out the eyes and everything, but even someone uh, was able to recognize one of the families, uh, little kids on one of those screenshots. And they were like, oh, this is so-and-so's kids. Didn't know this person, didn't follow this person. I don't follow a lot of like YouTube mommy bloggers. I just don't, or vloggers, but um, she gave me the handle. I reached out to her immediately because I, I was still in this like spiraling, like I was still in this like major rabbit hole of like panic. And mm -hmm. I reached out to this mom and I was like, hey, your child's photos, um, they're on these role play accounts. And I was like, I just found these role play accounts and my, my kids were on there and I was like, kept freaking out. And she was like, oh yeah, it happens all the time. And I was like, oh, well, what do you do? She was like, I just ask them to take them down and they usually do. And she was like, thanks for letting me know. I'll, I'll be happy to report it. But like, so chill about it. So chill. And then she, she had the audacity, which I feel like this is kind of a stab at me in some way. It wasn't like, she didn't know me or mention my name or anything, but gets on her story. And like, she's talking in the car and she's like, and for everyone coming at me about my kids being on um, my page and my videos and like just made this whole like disclaimer as to why her and her husband have chosen to do that. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. chill out. It was just really weird. And, and basically took offense to the fact that people were trying to tell her that her kids were on these. Well, let me, let me, let me add on top of that. A lot of, when it, when it, when you go into these comment sections, a lot in TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and some concerned, and it's usually never a guy. I'm pretty much sometimes, it's a man, but it's all women. Okay. This mm -hmm. is who follows your shit. You know that that's who follows me, but I'm generally the only guy in there saying something like, stop doing this shit. This is ridiculous. Right. And then I'll get a whole bunch of people like, if you sexualize this, it means that you're a pedophile. That's what they'll say to me. I'm like, okay, think about this for a second. They, they don't even willing to understand the risk. I'm like, look, if, and there's like 10 women, 15, 20, 30 depends on the content, right? The stoffers, um, I forget what her name is on Instagram. She's got tons and tons of followers. She does this. Her kids are her only content. It's her name, but it's all her kids. And you'll see a bunch of sexual dances and things like that. I'm like, you got to stop doing this. Please just wake up. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not rude. I'm just like, stop. You got to stop. But and even I, you opened my eyes to that because I can totally get behind the idea of like, you know, stop sexualizing my body and, and like, we need to be able to exist and we need to be able to, there is that side, but like at the end of the day, like you told me yesterday, like you are a man and you're not really like changing your, like, or men in general, like that's just how, that's where their mind goes. And like, it's just at the end of the day, it's the truth of just how people do see it. And so and, they're and just again, two yeah, and I want to stand up for that too. It's not just that we're, we're pigs and we're, again, men are, are driven a little bit, especially men who grew up like I did. And it's not, I think a lot of women are like, well, you got to control your emotions and your feelings. Of course I do. But I'm also able to recognize a beautiful woman. I mean, that doesn't make me a pervert. I mean, mm -hmm. if, you know, if I'm walking through the mall and I recognize a beautiful woman and my wife's there, I'm like, that's a beautiful woman. We have that type of relationship. I'm just saying it's kind of nice. She recognizes Rip from Yellowstone and she's would leave me in a heartbeat for that guy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, I have that type of relationship. But at the same time, I get what you're saying. Like, and um, we had a conversation about a couple of your posts and some breastfeeding because you are a big advocate for breastfeeding. And that's great. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not even awareness. You're just doing it because you think it's beautiful and that's great. Yeah. But what you're saying is, and if you're a lot, if, if I can say this, you were approached by somebody and your world who said, you know, you're showing your boobs online and it was a boy, a teenager. Right. And so what, what people have to take into consideration is, is that it, it, you can't help it if it's sexual. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that at all, especially if you're an adult consenting to all that stuff. That's great. Right. I mean, if you're, if you are confident enough to show it and there are, are people confident enough to consume it and enjoy it. Awesome. But kids can't give informed consent to do any of that stuff, right. to wear the clothes that this woman, I'll, I'll just use Stoffer for example, the things that they put these girls in from Shine and the clothes that they wear, Piper Raquel, all these little girls on the internet dressing like adults, and they're not. I mean, 
I think part of it is privacy that we're not giving our kids anymore. They're going to be online forever. Anybody can access that. Plutos are using it. Um, their future is at stake because what if they don't want to be influencers? What if they want to just live a normal life, go get a job? Their shit's on the internet forever. And if you've given like eight passengers a perfect example of this, those kids have lived online for basically, basically their whole life. Chad, specifically their son, went through some issues for whatever it was and was sent to like a one of those camps to be scared straight or whatever it was, right? Lived on a beanbag chair for eight months without a door in his bathroom. I know this because she told us her daughter struggles with acne. We you know, you know how I know that? Because she told us. She yells at her kids. She takes things away. She take, took Christmas away from two of her six kids because they were bad. They were 10 and eight, okay? I know this because she tells us this stuff. In the future, everybody's going to be able to access that stuff. And those kids... When they're 20, might say, oh, my God, I know I might have loved it when I was young, but I don't like it now. Right. And they're allowed to feel that way. OK, mm -hmm. they are allowed to say your parents can't come back to you after and say, well, you said it was fine. No, mom, your responsibility was to keep was to make those choices because I can't give informed consent because I didn't realize the ramifications of my future being on the Internet. Now, when I go get a job and a person Googles me, now you can Google any of us right now. We are already Googleable. Imagine how much more our kids are going to be Googleable when they're old, getting jobs. They might have said something stupid on a video, being kids, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter anymore if right. you were a kid and said something stupid. You're still cancelable. So the issue is these parents are putting all the stuff out there. And I honestly believe it's never without consent. Maybe so, once in a while they say, Oh, I asked my kid. They don't ask their kids. So they a lot of it is kids. like that's it for me, is like I don't I'm not making this decision. Like this was the nudge I needed, but it's also like not just because of something harmful that right. could happen. It's not because I literally think someone is going to come kidnap my kids necessarily other than just like my kids deserve to just be live in private play in private go to the doctor in private so there's just like that whole other side to it I, I, i'm just i'm listening and i'm going through i'm on instagram right now and i'm just typing it role play and also i want to mention that having a teenager um having a daughter that's 13 helps me so much realize because when you have these little kids like following your lead and like doing everything mm -hmm. that you tell them is fun to do, uh, take a picture or modeling this or going to a sponsored vacation, like you do all these things that your kids, of course they think it's fun. When mm -hmm. they grow up and they actually realize it's not fun, like my mm -hmm. daughter has done over the past two years, mm -hmm. um, for the past year or two, I would never have posted anything without her consent. It just, yeah. it's an, it's an eye opener though, that like children do change and they grow up. And for me, that's exactly. been a huge part of me stepping back. So, um, just take it from someone who has a teenager. I know you, I know you yeah, have older kids. Too. And so it's easier to think of in that light when you're considering them versus like when my daughter was seven, you know? Yeah. And again, it's not even about, I think these parents are misguided in saying that I asked my kids for consent because they can't give it to you. They cannot. Even, and if they, they can, can tell you, but they, they don't really know what <laughs> they they're meaning. They can meaning. say yes. And you're just, you're just basically coercing it. But at the same time, yeah. what's the informed consent idea. And I brought Dr. Kirk on and he comes on a lot and he, I asked him, can kids ever give informed consent? And he said, no. And he's even up to the age of like, Depends on the kid, but like 18, our frontal, our frontal cortex isn't even developed or 25. So many kids make dumb choices when they're kids because they don't understand the future. They can't understand the outcome, right? They mm -hmm. might say, well, I might get in trouble for this, but they don't realize that maybe down the road, like Ellie Darby, who was posting really, really disgusting things when she's 17, 18 years old, didn't know that now that she's 26 or 27, she's going to be canceled for it, right? She didn't know that. Right. At the time, she thought it was funny. Right? right, she made a thought. She might have thought she might get some pushback on Twitter, but she didn't realize ten years down the road she's about to lose her whole entire life because of it. It's right? Terrible. So when we ask our kids, "Hey, do we have your consent?" Don't even ask your kids that because it's impossible to get it. Don't even and so go you're there. Just, you're just yeah, you're just doing it to make your to appease yourself to make yourself feel less guilty about it. And then coming I, to other yeah. and then like you know the person who came at me and saying that like oh but my son loves to model and loves taking these photos and and I literally asked her like three questions and in like a really short uh, DM conversation she was like you know what thank you for respectfully talking to me about this. I do realize that this could be a problem and I'm going to majorly like reevaluate. So, I mean, if, cause if you think about it, like they don't, they will think anything is fun. If you tell them anything is fun. How can influencers and people out there who are doing what you're doing in your level. And again, I, even if you're doing family stuff, whatever, at least heed this, heed this. And if you're going to continue to do it, do this. So wh how, what are some tricks to finding these accounts? 
what are the hashtags they're using? I typed in hashtag RP. It's pretty big. Um, do you remember anything that was on the account that could be like, let's start helping other influencers look to see if this exists online? On my photo that I have a screenshot for, uh, one was hashtag country RP. Maybe it looks like I live in the country. I don't, but mm -hmm. I mean, I live in a small community. Um, one is, oh yeah, literate RP. That's another literate. one. Literate. And one okay, is I'm looking at, because, oh, wow. because, because another thing about that is, um, you'll see a lot of accounts say literate, uh, role play in their, uh, in their bio. And I think it's like, uh, just like telling everyone, I think it's an invitation for adults to come in and play oh, this okay. role play. There's also illiterate RP. Damn man. Family. Literate. RP, holy crap. And then family RP, adopt RP, that's where the adoption thing comes in. And then role play, southern RP, and okay. then bisexual RP. That. Okay, so I want I want influencers out there to just go search any of these role play style accounts, do a little bit, and then look through country, or if you do cleaning, do cleaning RP. If you do beauty RP, try it all. Mm -hmm. If you are in that space, look for what you generally tag and then go type RP after it. And if you find yourself, check yourself. And then, because again, there's not much you can do if you're not willing to change anyway, right? And delete if, yourself. Again, I mean, if you want to, if you want to put yourself out there and you're on an account like that, okay, whatever, you're safe, you're an adult, right? There's not much that can really happen. But when it comes to your kids, that's how shit gets spread. And that is out of your control. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's a picture of me on an RP account or whatever, what, okay, who wants a fat bald guy on their account? It doesn't matter. But when it's your kids, that's a little bit different. That's when it gets a little bit more scary because you do you absolutely have no control of that afterwards. That's out of your control. Yeah, that's a good. I'm glad you mentioned that. That actually, I guess I'll start telling people that, like, because that could be a way to find yourself. Like, if yep. you're, you know, really into one a few certain things on your page, they may take that and role play that. I don't know. Mine's definitely my kids and family stuff. But yeah, and I'm on here right now, and I'm thinking. They're taking a lot of beautiful Instagram accounts. And I'm, I mean, half these people are, are role-playing. They're fake. These photos aren't theirs. And I don't think these people know that that exists. And so maybe the idea is to take a couple of them, reverse them, and search who they really are and say, just so you're aware, you're on a role-playing account. Yeah. Just to see. I want to see what people think about this. Because maybe, maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe these people are doing that. But at the same time, there's got to be a percentage of these people who are bad. Yeah. But like I said, of the four of the four point five seven five million followers on Everly LeBrant's Instagram, okay, seventy five percent of those are men. Of of that three million group of adult males, I'm sure there's one or two baddies in there. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if not tens of thousands of them. Right. So that's why we're really worried about this. So, and so w w you've learned obviously what you're going to do. Any what are, what are some final thoughts about this whole process? What have you learned? What do, what is your future? What are you looking for? What are you looking to do now? Even though this was something that you loved, you were thinking about it, but what's what's next for you? Yeah, I think for me, it's I'm at a place of peace with it all. I mean, whatever's out there is out there. I've deleted everything with my kids' faces. I deleted a Facebook account from 2007 because uh, how Facebook is set up, you probably know, but like, you know how you can go in and delete certain albums that you've put on, but you can't go through mobile uploads, profile pictures. There's certain albums you have to one by one take down the photo, and I'm not about to sit there with 3,000 photos. So I just like started fresh with Facebook. I really don't even need one at all, but I deleted my OG Facebook. Um, all these little changes for me is not only uh, going to help me in the future protect my kids from these creeps, but also just their childhood. Uh, but in a large way, it's a stepping stone for me to like break my addiction with social media in, in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. Something I've been uh, passionate about doing uh, this coming year. I have started my own podcast and things like that, uh, mm -hmm. getting off of these spaces so that I can um, take the community that I've curated for years and years and just share that in other in other places. Good. Glad. So, I hope and, and maybe be an advocate for this type of thing. Hey, this happened to me, so let's let's help you. Let's help it not happen to you. I definitely feel, and that's really quick. That's a that's a weird space to be in because the other day my post went viral. I, uh, I have a post that went violated. It was the one that you actually shared yep. in your. Uh, yep. That went viral, and it was a uh, for the first time ever as someone in this you know influencing community. I hated the 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 attention from that because. Mm -hmm. 
on one hand it's spreading awareness but on the other hand it's like an influx of followers i think i gained like 600 followers over that or 700 wow. or something and so to me it was just, it's more you know cyber shit harassment all the things that like i have to put up with personally mm -hmm. through that which i don't like i've already mm -hmm. dealt with but yeah it's just it, it's a lot but i hope it can help people i hope it can at least open eyes but yeah I, i'm going to navigate this in a way of just turning it into a positive as much as i can Good. I, I appreciate that. And you've got a podcast out there and I'll link it below and I'll link it in the chat so people can go follow. And I'm, this, this episode will be available on there, hopefully, I think, right? You're going to release it on your podcast? Yes, I'm going to post I'll edit this it on for my... you. Perfect. <laughs> I know, I can't um, wait. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I appreciate, Katie, we had a great conversation yesterday about like what, being creatives and what it looks like. And I love that you could pivot, right? The idea is that I would love for all these family vloggers to not be canceled, to not like go to jail or anything. I mean, it depends what you did, but it, like, just pivot. You can pivot. You Everybody. can actually share your kids very beautifully without their yeah. faces. Uh, it's, it can be done. <laughs> it can be. I, I went through your profile, obviously, because I have to do my research and just make sure I'm not being a damn hypocrite. But, <laughs> you know, you've got you've got some breastfeeding photos. We talked about that and how beautiful it is. And I think a lot of most of people in here are women and they understand that. Right. And then, you know, there are people that do it not tastefully and they do it on purpose. And it's there's it's just a matter of the viewer and drawing your own line to say, I don't like that. Don't I don't want to consume it. Don't like yeah. it. But if you love it and it's great. Go for it. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. I'm just going to give you the information. You make the choice. Yeah. I really appreciate your perspective too. Just talking to me. It's, it's been very helpful, honestly. Awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, Katie. Well, that's been great. I'm going to obviously stay in touch and we'll follow your podcast. And hopefully a lot of people will go listen to that. I, I, I applaud you for making what would uh, a lot of people would consider a hard decision, right? You make money on here. This is something you're passionate about, but you saw the signs and you're making a choice. And I think that you're kind of like early edge of this. I think you're going to see a lot of people just like yourself who are in tune with their families, their bodies, their, their, their image, everything else to say, okay, this has gotten out of hand a little bit and you're going to see this start to move. And I, I think that's, you're way ahead of your time. And I think that's important. Thank you. Awesome. So thanks for coming on the show. I mean, it's been great. It's a great conversation and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Awesome.